Hello, I'm Denise LaFrance. Coming up next on City Beat, Las Cruces is receiving money. Money that will go towards improving our water. Find out how that money is going to help. We're from Hermosa and we love water. The Water Festival teaches kids about water as a resource. We'll show you what these kids experience. And if you're looking for something fun for the family, fishing may be something you haven't thought of yet. A look at the opportunities here in Las Cruces. Plus, last month we introduced you to the city's public information office intern from our sister city in Germany. We'll find out more about Rika Schockenhoff and our sister city program in two different segments. That and more coming up. Welcome to City Beat for the month of May. Las Cruces is getting a lot of upgrades to its water and sewer systems. Governor Susana Martinez visited us last month with the news. We're getting $4.25 million for water infrastructure projects. This capital outlay funding goes towards replacing septic tank systems and water wells and adding groundwater monitoring wells. The well Martinez stood in front of at a news conference last month is one that will be replaced after being in use for 37 years. She says it's good to bring this news to her home community and others that are in need of sustainable clean water. It really feels good because you can throw you know, $10,000 at a project at a time every year and you'll never get it done. To be able to throw the full amount of money, it's their money. It's taxpayers' dollars, but we're using it in the most responsible way to give them the best infrastructure that they can have, which is providing good water to their citizens. So it feels good to come home and be able to do that here. A day earlier, citing historic drought conditions, Martinez called upon Las Cruces and visitors to do their part to prepare for wildfires. She announced that March 30th through April 5th was Wildfire Awareness Week in New Mexico. Local and regional firefighters, forest staff and lawmakers joined Martinez to discuss preparations for the upcoming fire season. Last year, more than 190,000 acres burned on public and private lands. For information on wildfires or prevention tips, you can visit nmfireinfo.com. Water became a fun learning tool for third and fourth grade kids in Las Cruces. The city held its 2014 Water Festival, teaching kids the importance of water in a desert community. CLC TV's Jennifer Martinez explains what the kids were taught on their information packed trip to Young Park. <laughs> Each year, the city of Las Cruces devotes a day to teaching third and fourth grade children the importance of water. Students arrived by the dozens at Young Park in mid-April for the 2014 Water Festival. This year's theme, Water in the Desert, Sustaining Life. So we have maybe a third of the kids here. We're expecting 1,500 kids uh, from 12 different schools and 24 buses. Once each kid arrived, they received a bag filled with learning materials and a water station passport to document each of the 26 places they stopped. They are convincing when they say they have learned a lot. It's like where it rains and the water goes in the ground, then the sun, it goes to ocean or river and it evaporates up to the sun and uh, then it rains again and it goes to clouds. Students say before this trip, water was something they may have taken for granted. Mendoza says he now understands the resource is limited and it should be taken care of for the future. About uh, water cycles, protecting the, what's it called, the ponds from like where you throw things, like where you take a car wash at your house, the little soap goes in the Rio Grande River. Many kids see school trips to the park as a day away from the classroom. But on this day, they learned about biology, safety, and plant life. And Jesus Oliva says after visiting just one station, he's ready to learn more. Um, a watershed is an area that collects water. He and his classmates are ready to share what they have learned with others, a welcome result from water festival organizers. Wherever it rains in the mountains, um, the water goes down into a river. And then from the river, where does it go? To the Atlantic Ocean. Well, we certainly hope that these kids will be ambassadors for water conservation in their homes and their communities. And um, so parents, we hope you're listening. <laughs> 
And if learning can come from a few hours of fun, the world's water supply might just be in better hands than the day before. Well, we want them to become aware of what they can do personally every day to help conserve water. So it's building an awareness. For City Beat, I'm Jennifer Martinez. Thanks, Jennifer. The city wants to thank all the students and teachers for their interest and all the sponsors who made this year's water festival so successful. Another opportunity for kids to learn near water was a kids fishing clinic at Aggie Pond. CLC TV's Adrian Guzman explains. Kids today are, like to play video games and computer games and all of that, but this gives them the true enjoyment of what outdoors is about. That is why the Mesilla Valley Fly Fishers and the New Mexico Game and Fish Department team up several times a year to put on fishing clinics for young children to learn the art of fishing. We've been doing this for 22 years now, co-sponsoring with the Game and Fish, and we set up all these learning stations. Learning stations included showing kids how to cast, knot hooks, picking out bait, making fishing flies, and even learning the biology of fish from these NMSU AFS students. How do fish breathe, do you know? Uh, with um, the gills, the gills. Exactly, those are right in there. It's really fun just to see the interest of the children. It's like, we would like to get them involved and excited about science and fisheries and it's just a really good way to do that. This station really got hands on, showing the kids how to gut their own fish. And you gotta get hold of this real good and, and pull. You grab it tightly, okay? And now pull straight down. Hold on to it tight, and pull down. That'll help you. Hold on to it. Pull. You're gonna pull. Let's pull. And look. Ah! Oh, Everything came out, you see that? That is so gross. <laughs> yeah. For this dad, fishing is a great father-daughter bonding experience. Yeah, it gives us good time, you know, get away from indoors, just be outdoors. Spend some time with her, like I said, I did it as a kid with my family, so it's good to pass on to her. Game and Fish officers made sure to start teaching the young fishermen from a young age the rules and regulations that go with fishing. The biggest thing that you have to remember is that you need a license when you turn 12. How old are you? 11. Seven. Seven. Two. Two. And that's what we really want as an agency. We want people to follow the rules. And if we can start educating our youth as soon as possible, they start getting it in their heads and their young minds that, hey, I, do I need a license or what rules do I have to follow? After the kids completed all the stations, they were now ready to put their newly learned skills to the test and try and catch the big one. This young fisherman was having a good day. Catching a lot of good fish. How many fish have you caught? Um, about four or five. And by the end of the day, young Anthony sounded like a true fisherman. That last fish, it was pretty big. It was like about this big. This is it's pretty big. For CLC TV, I'm Adrian Guzman. Thank you, Adrian. This clinic was geared towards kids with very limited or no fishing experience. For information on future fishing clinics, you can call Game and Fish at 575-532-2100. Last month on City Beat, we introduced you to Rika Schockenhoff, the public information office's intern from our sister city in Nienburg, Germany. Rika has had many new experiences to take home to share with family and friends, and today we'll show you just a few of the things she encountered here in the Las Cruces area. Guten Tag und herzlich willkommen. My name is Frederike Schockenhoff, but you can call me Rika for short. I'm from the lovely city of Nienburg in Germany, a city that is similar in population and geography to the city of the Crosses. I was interested to learn more about our sister city in America, so I set off on a journey to experience the people and culture that make up the city of Las Cruces. So I safely arrived and now I'm off to learn more about this beautiful city. It didn't take long to learn how beautiful Las Cruces is and how much there is to do here. After 
doing some sightseeing alone, I get a few of my new friends to show me around. Not only is there a lot to see and do in Las Cruces, but there's also incredible places to visit just outside the city. What Las Cruzans might take most pride in is their new Mexican-style food. I'm at a local eatery to find out what the hype is all about. While inside the restaurant, I got to check out the exotic wildlife on display, including this friendly little piranha. I really enjoyed watching these guys, though I think one of them got tired of me staring at him. Enough sightseeing, it's time to eat. I'm in historic Old Messia with Mr. Tom Hutchinson, the owner of La Posta. Thank you for having me here. Delighted to have you here. And will you please explain to me what a typical New Mexican dish is? Sure, I'd be delighted to. What you have here are four of our more popular dishes. Uh, all of them contain red or green chili. Mm -hmm. And this chili is grown here in Messia Valley. Uh, it is the uh, staple of all our plates. It provides all the taste and flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, on this particular plate, we call it our La Posta combination. It has our red chili and pork and our, our green chili relleno. Mm -hmm. On this plate over here is our green chili uh, enchilada with sour cream on top, one of our popular and most, uh, uh, most requested dishes. Over here is our red chili enchilada with a fried egg on top. Kind of looks unusual, but that's how we do things in southern New Mexico. <laughs> and the final dish here is our Compuesta Cup. Uh, we invented it here in 1939, at least that's the way the story goes. It includes some of our red carne, frijoles, and lettuce and tomato. It was now time for the chase test. This food was completely different from anything I'd ever tried before. I feared that New Mexican food would be too spicy for me, but rather I found the food to be very flavorful and delicious. Now that I was stuffed, I was off on a new adventure. I'm at the Las Cruces Farmers and Crafts Market downtown because I've heard it's one of the best in the nation and that you can get pretty much everything here. So I'll go and check it out. The market spans the entire Las Cruces downtown. From one end to the other, you can find everything you need here. From locally grown produce, unique drinks, beautiful art from local talents, delicious food, native flowers and of course all the music. You can even adopt a new best friend. This guy is from my home country, a German Shepherd. In Germany we just call them Shepherds. I did fall for this little guy. I wonder if he would mind moving out of the country? <laughs> I truly love the Las Cruces Crafts and Farmers Market. I spoke with one vendor who said it was a great place to show his craft and meet new people. How long have you been here on the Farmers Market and why do you come here every week again? Is it such a great opportunity? Well, I've been here for, my wife and I have been here for 34 years. Wow. And it's a great opportunity for everybody to show their wares, you know, their talent. Mm -hmm. But without talent, you ain't gonna make nothing. Mm -hmm. We can't sell anything commercial. Mm -hmm. We can't go buy it and then sell it here mm -hmm. for more. It's gotta be made by the vendors. Everything in this market is by the vendors. And you meet a lot of people, you know, from a, mm -hmm. out of town, from different countries. We've had people from Australia, Russia, Germany, Italy, uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. Usually they come and visit, so yeah. we get all kinds of people here. And it's interesting, because you learn a lot from <laughs> other people. And I also learned a lot from my time in Las Cruces. I liked the entertainment and how it related to the culture of the people in the area. Most impressive to me is the outdoors. It differs a lot from everything I know from Germany. You can see so far and there's always a mountain range. What I love most about the New Mexican lifestyle is the warm and open character of the people. Thank you 
for a wonderful time, Las Cruces. Goodbye, adios and bis bald. For CLC TV, I'm Rika Shokunov. Thank you, Rika, for sharing your time with us and becoming part of the City of Las Cruces family. We'll learn a little more about our sister city program from Rika a little later in our Ask the segment. Well, the Las Cruces Country Music Festival was another success this year. Headliners included the Charlie Daniels Band and Cassidy Pope. The Convention and Visitors Bureau hosted the event last weekend in April at Main Street downtown, NMSU, and the Farm and Ranch Museum. Three minimum wage discussions took place in City Hall. These great conversations were not intended to produce a specific decision, but to inform the community about diverse perspectives on the issue. To view the great conversation discussions, head to our website at clctv.com and click on the Meetings tab. The city's 4th of July celebration is moving locations this year. That and more in our City Minute. The 4th of July celebration is heading to the Field of Dreams. Local, regional and national entertainment will take place there, followed by a fireworks display. The electric light parade remains on Main Street on the 3rd with a 5K and fun run beforehand. City offices are closed on Memorial Day, May 26th. Police and fire services will not be affected. Solid waste and recycling services will operate on a normal schedule and the Foothills landfill will have regular Monday hours. Movies in the Park returns to Young Park Saturday evenings in May. Movies include Frozen, Despicable Me Too, Planes and Man of Steel. All movies start at 7.30 p.m. Music in the Park is also back with the Mayor's Jazz Fest at Main Street downtown on May 25th and other performances that will follow each Sunday. Performances in June are expected to be at Young Park but could change. And the Las Cruces Museum of Art proudly presents Chicanitas Small Paintings from the Cheech Marin Collection. The exhibit opened on Friday, May 2nd and concludes Saturday, July 19th. During the past 30 years, Las Cruces has been building international relationships with the help of the Sister Cities program. Our intern, Rika Schockenhoff, helps us get to know the program a little better. Rika? Hi, I'm Rika Schockenhoff and this is Ask The. And today's guest is Noreen Lehman. She's the president of the Sister Cities Foundation Board. Noreen? Nice to have you here and welcome to ASPA. Well, thank you very much, Rika. It's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> um, Noreen, I came to Las Cruces with the help of the Sister Cities program, and I'd like you um, to explain to the people of Las Cruces uh, what great opportunities the program provides for them. I'm sure we can do that together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, then please tell us what is the Sister Cities program and how Las Cruces got involved? Las Cruces became involved through student exchanges, uh, first with Laredo, Mexico, and then with Nienburg, Germany. After a few years, these exchanges became formalized as sister city relationships, Laredo in 1989 and Nienburg in 1993. Mm -hmm. And how does the program work? How, who coordinates the contacts between the cities? Just volunteers or are government uh, officials involved? There is a, a foundation board, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that coordinates and oversees the activities of all of the sister city uh, affiliation committees. These affiliation committees, one for each sister city, report to the board. It is the affiliation committees in particular the chair of each committee, who is the main focal point for the contact for that particular sister city. Mm -hmm. um, and how can I get involved? Uh, is there a certain age uh, or, or what can I do if I want to be a part of sister cities? Basically, anyone can join and anyone, even someone who's not a member, can go on a, a trip if there's enough room. For example, in September, we were celebrating the 20th anniversary mm -hmm. of the relationship between Nienborg and Las Cruces, and we had 26 people who 
from Las Cruces who went over to Neenborg to celebrate, right. as you know. <laughs> Um, great. Is there anything else the people of Las Cruces should know about the program or something you plan for the future? Yes, there is. We are planning to have a, a golf tournament, which is a fundraiser for us, on April 26th at the Sonoma Ranch Golf Course. And we could still use some teams and whole sponsors. So if any of you out there are golfers or would like to sponsor a whole, we would love to have you. And I would ask that you would contact me. My phone number is 575-522-4477. And we do have a website, which is lascrucessistercities.org. Okay, great. Thank you, Noreen. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Rika. This is Noreen Lehman for the Sister Cities Foundation Board of Las Cruces. Thanks, Rika. Rika will head back to Germany before the next episode. We wish her the best and thank her for all her help here at CLC TV and the Public Information Office. Well, each year the Public Information Office holds a video PSA contest for middle and high school students in the Las Cruces area. This year's gold and silver winners were presented medals at the April 21st City Council meeting. The public then had a chance to vote for an overall gold winner on CLC TV. That student or students could win a free iPod. Well, the votes are in. Winners are Matthew Von Heater and Skylar Trujillo from Centennial High School with their video, Drink More Water. Hey, Skylar. Oh, didn't see that. Did you know that thirst is often mistaken for hunger? Oh, I didn't know that. Tell me more. Many weight loss experts recommend drinking a glass of water before eating a meal or snack. If that satisfies you, then it was thirst. Well gee, thanks. I'm gonna stop eating so much junk food and start drinking more water and live my life healthier. Congratulations to the winner and all the students that participated. Well, that's all for this episode of City Beat. Remember, tune in for live city council meetings right here Mondays at 1 p.m. Plus, all archived meetings and programs can be found on clctv.com. And don't forget to like us on our Facebook page. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denise LaFrance.